This is a sample tapping session for cancer. All right, this is the way that I do it. It's the way that I'm doing it this time. I do it differently at uh, different times, depending on what's going on at the time, what's, what emotions are, are coming up. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to do some tapping just to give you a sample session of a type of tapping that I do for cancer. Um, as I mentioned in another video, I believe cancer is not just a physical disease. It is a mental, emotional, spiritual, physical disease. Uh, a lot of times with any disease, not just cancer, but what is physical is actually a late manifestation of things that have been happening uh, on another level, like a mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. All right, and there are some who believe that all disease begins on a spiritual level, and it um, eventually affects the uh, physical. All right, but regardless of what your philosophy is on that, um, any type of chronic disease. Uh, like cancer or any type of serious disease is going to produce some emotional fallout. If nothing else, just pain and suffering itself produces emotional fallout. So regardless of where the, uh, the, the cause of disease came from, uh, I think you can do some benefit to yourself if you work not only just on the physical aspect, but also on the emotional, me uh, mental, uh, aspect as well and that's what tapping does. Uh, tapping um, is uh, also called emotional freedom technique or EFT. All right in this video I'm not going to get into a great detail about how it works um, because there's a lot of online available. There are also a lot of good videos online uh, demonstrating tapping and I encourage you to uh, study this subject further. There's some good books on the, on the matter. It's been around quite some time. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's based on acupuncture meridians. All right, and you're tapping on certain acupuncture meridians while you're stimulating certain thoughts in your brain. Um, and what you're doing really is, is these certain thoughts um, or memories in your brain are associated with certain emotions. All right, and then the emotions can, uh, and the and the disease uh, can get into a vicious cycle, uh, which came first, the emotional problem or the disease. Um, but regardless of which came first, it creates a cycle. And what tap tapping does is it breaks that cycle. Uh, what you're doing is you're kind of cutting the connection between the emotion and the physical disease. And what this does is this allows you to heal more completely because a lot of times it's that emotional memory that is impeding your healing. All right, well, um, you start uh, tapping on what's called the karate point, and that's this part of your hand right here. It's an acupuncture point right there, and we're not using needles. We're using tapping, which is a form of acupressure. So this is not actually acupuncture. It's, a it's meridian therapy. Acupuncture is a, is a part of meridian therapy. The meridian therapy um, includes also acupressure uh, and all, because there's all kinds of ways to uh, stimulate acupuncture points. You start right here and I just use these fingers right here, cover that entire area. Make sure you don't miss the point while, while you're tapping uh, on that point. Then you, uh, you repeat your initial uh, phrase three times. And this phrase uh, could change from each session. All right. But the one that I'm going to uh, start with is uh, just simple. Um, even though I have cancer, I completely love and accept and forgive myself. Even though I have cancer, I completely love and accept and forgive myself. Even though I have cancer, I completely love and accept and forgive myself. All right, then you go with a short one word or a short statement um, abbreviating uh, that entire thought and you start tapping right here inside the eyebrows as you say cancer and that one word cancer just kind of um, brings up the entire thought that I was tapping on here just just kind of a, a shorthand cancer next is side of the eye cancer
then under the eye, cancer. Then under the nose, cancer. Then under the lip, right here, this part between your chin and your lip, cancer. Then collarbone, cancer. Then under the arm, cancer. And top of the head, cancer. <clears throat> and repeat that, cancer, cancer, cancer. Let me show you a little shortcut. You can actually do these two at the same time by using these two fingers. This point here under the nose and this point here. You can hit those both at the same time, cancer, cancer. And there's also another point that um, included in the EFT, which is usually left out. There's another point, but I don't like to leave it out. After the collarbone point, this point is usually skipped, and there's a there's a point right here in your chest, right two inches below your nipple, directly two inches below your nipple. That's another point. All right, that point is usually skipped in EFT, and the reason for that is for women, it's very awkward. Often have to like lift up their breast in order to tap underneath it, and uh, and uh, so tappers have just teachers have just found it more convenient to just leave that point out. Uh, I like to use that point. I think it's important. So when I'm uh, doing the tapping along with the recorded um, video, say, I'll cover these two at the same time and then that leaves me an extra uh, tapping. And then I do this and I do this one uh, under the nipple. Then under the arm. And look at a chart. I'll, uh, I'll include a chart with this video showing exactly where these points are. And you have to under the arm, top of the head. Okay, so let's do that good. Cancer. Cancer. And that word cancer represents everything emotionally that's going on in my mind. Cancer. And my body and my spiritual being. Cancer. 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 Under the arm. Cancer. Top of the head. Cancer. All right, then you can uh, move on. Um, you can make this as uh, simple or as complicated as you would like. Um, as different emotions appear while you're doing this, just kind of uh, pay attention to what's going on. And if something new uh, pops up, then what you want to do is tap on that. All right, now initially when you first start tapping this, uh, the statements quite often are negative. Like, even though I have cancer, that's a negative statement as opposed to a positive um, affirmative statement. Like, you know, my body is free of cancer. All right, you start off with a negative, and the reason for that is very important because you're actually working on the negative thought. The negative thought is there, and just ignoring the thought is not going to make it go away. It's still going to be there in your mind, in your subconscious mind. If, not in your conscious mind. All right, but then you can move on after the negative and the and and start making other uh, statements uh, like more affirmative statements. And I'm going to show you an example of some of the statements um, that I make. All right, now another thing that I struggle with uh, myself is the fact that I have to do chemotherapy. Uh, I'll explain at the um, end of this video. I'll explain a little bit about why I'm doing chemotherapy. I went to, through that a little bit. In a, in a previous video. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, even though I'm a natural health provider and all of my life I have taught people to use a natural route rather than the um, um, chemical pharmaceutical route. However, I have always told people from the very start, I said, you know what, if I'm in a car accident uh, and I have broken bones and I'm bleeding to death, don't run me off to my chiropractor. Take me to the emergency room. Those are the people who are best equipped to handle emergencies. In other words, when things have gone beyond prevention, uh, the prevention didn't work or whatever, um, but you, and when you're in an emergency situation where your life is uh, imminently in danger, and in my case what was happening is m my tumor was despite my best efforts with the natural alternative cares, my tumor, I was having CT scans done every two months, and each two months showed my tumor was doubling in size. Every two months it had doubled in size. All right, at that point I figured, okay, I'm at the point now to where I'm in that emergency state. Run me off to, you know, to the emergency room. Um, and that's the reason, in a nutshell, that I, that I got on cancer, uh, chemotherapy, I mean. 
but anyway so I have to struggle with chemotherapy um, and I want the chemotherapy to work I don't want to have negative uh, thoughts and emotions based on the chemotherapy because if I decide to do the chemotherapy uh, I want it to work obviously uh, so I want to approach the chemotherapy with a positive attitude and not with the uh, attitude of uh, you know I failed so I'm having to resort to chemotherapy because that's not going to be conducive to healing all right so another thing I have to tap on is chemotherapy and that is even though I'm on chemotherapy I completely love and accept and forgive myself even though I am on chemotherapy for cancer I completely love and accept and forgive myself even though I'm on chemotherapy for cancer I completely love and accept and forgive myself chemotherapy the shorthand version of that statement chemotherapy 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 getting both at the same time chemotherapy under the nipple chemotherapy under the arm chemotherapy top of the head chemotherapy all right then you can go through each time approaching um, or uh, uh, addressing different aspects of um, including um, including planning positive thoughts this chemotherapy is killing every cancer cell in my body this chemotherapy is killing every cancer cell in my body this chemotherapy is killing every cancer cell in my body this chemotherapy is killing every cancer cell in my body my immune system is strong my immune system is working in harmony with the chemotherapy my immune system is working in harmony with chemotherapy to eliminate all cancer from my body my immune system is working in harmony with chemotherapy to remove all cancer from my body my mind body and spirit are becoming cancer free my mind body and spirit are becoming free of all negative energy my mind body and spirit are becoming free of all negative energy my mind body and spirit are becoming free of all negative energy my mind my body and my spirit are becoming free of all negative energy my meridians are free of all negative energy my chakras are free of all negative energy my aura is free of all negative energy and that is um, sample uh, a sample of the uh, tapping sessions that I'm doing for cancer because I believe it's not only important to address cancer from the physical but also from the emotional mental and spiritual angles all right and um, but on the topic um, again of uh, you know why did I come down with cancer I have, I have to ask myself here I'm 60 years old and ever since I've been a natural health practitioner um, since 1984 okay had a long career as a natural health practitioner teaching people how to do things without um, drugs all right how, and uh, one of the things that I've even since 19 84 even in the year 1984 I have taught classes and one of the cl most important classes I've taught is colon health or right, I've talked to people about colon cleansing and throughout my entire life I've done colon cleanses of various types from taking fiber supplements to um, um, just making sure that your your bowels are moving every single day I've taught people it's extremely important that you don't get constipated that your bowels move every day and that you periodically do some colon cleansing some liver cleansing and cl cleansing of the detoxification routes of the body and one of the arguments that I've used for doing that is to prevent cancer because colon cancer is one of the most common cancers out there and it's also potentially one of the most preventable cancers uh, because we know the uh, the things that are associated with the increased risk of colon cancer the biggest one being um, transit time. In other words, the amount of time it takes for your uh, for digestive material to pass through your system. You don't want things hanging around in there. You don't want uh, a meal that you eat today. You don't want to pass it three days from now. You want to pass it. You want to have a bowel movement every day. Keep things moving through, and that way, when you take 
carcinogens in your food or when you produce carcinogens in your digestive tract through uh, digestion. Those carcinogens pass through before they just, they, you don't want them just sitting around in contact with the colon wall where they're absorbed into the body. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've practiced um, a lot of uh, techniques, um, or just not techniques, but lifestyle um, habits um, in order to prevent uh, cancer. Why did I come down with cancer? And um, something I have to ask myself. <clears throat> And of course, there could be many reasons, um, and I'm going to explore now some of the reasons, uh, some of the causes of cancer. Uh, of course, there are many causes of cancer. I don't think it's just one. Just uh, most diseases that people people suffer are not from a single cause. All right, most diseases are from multiple cause causes piling up, adding to each other until that final straw that broke the camel's back is laid on and then boom then you could come down with the disease um, some of the things that they claim um, um, cause cancer one is uh, genetics that's one that's thrown around a lot and I don't like uh, when people use the uh, genetics as an excuse for for any type of disease um, because um, we, do, we just know, I mean, because that's a cop-out. You know, if you say, oh, I've got diabetes, but, you know, there's nothing I could have done about it because it just runs in my family, it's in my genes, you know, so it's not my fault, in other words. So when you blame it on genetics, what you're doing, really, is you're, you're, you're saying it's, it's not something that you did. In other words, it's not your fault. It's, it's something that happened to you, and that's the way people like to think about disease. It's not something that I did myself or something that I brought on because I was, you know, do, did something wrong. Uh, it's because something that just happened to me. And the medical uh, profession really um, fosters that type of thinking. Um, but I believe people should take responsibility for their health, um, practice some prevention. Um, but what we've learned about genetics is that there's a new science out there called epigenetics, and uh, you might look up that word epigenetics and find out what that new science is all about. But basically, what epigenetics uh, has found is that even though people may have um, predisposition for certain diseases because of their genes, um, whether or not that gene manifests depends more on environmental factors than it does on the gene itself. In other words, so to give you an example, all right, both of my parents died of cancer, okay? All right, so typically medically you look at my family history and say, well, I'm at really high risk of cancer. Both my mom and my dad both died of cancer. All right, and, uh, and there may be a gene in the family that predisposes me to cancer, sure. All right, but that does not mean that I'm doomed to have cancer. I mean, it, 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 uh, for instance, my dad smoked cigarettes ever since World War II when he went off to Germany as a, a GI and they, they gave, rationed him cigarettes and they got him all smoking cigarettes. And when he came home, he had a habit which he tried in his entire life to break, which he couldn't until he finally came down with cancer. Uh, but my dad was a smoker and he, he uh, ended up with lung cancer. Okay, so... You know, was that genetic or was that the cigarette smoke? Well, actually, maybe a genetic predisposition, because not all smokers get cancer. Maybe it's a genetic predisposition that was triggered by the smoking cigarettes for his entire life. Or that's what the science of uh, epigenetics is all about. My mother did never smoke, um, but she lived with my father who smoked all the time, and so she was always exposed to secondhand smoke. She didn't die of lung cancer. She died of another type of cancer that appeared elsewhere in her body. Uh, but we know that um, um, breathing secondhand smoke increases your chances of cancer, not just lung cancer, but other forms of cancer. Or as far as me, I never smoked in my life. I didn't come down with uh, with a uh, lung cancer. It came down with colon cancer. Okay, why is that? Was it the gene or what triggered? Uh, if I do have a gene, you know what triggered the gene? There could be a uh, a million things. Now I've um, also eaten healthy. I eat um, um organic foods. I don't uh, eat uh, junk food. I mean, I have some weaknesses. I have a sweet tooth. I like sugar, and sugar may have been um. 
I would say probably my guess is that sugar, because people don't realize that sugar is a huge, huge, huge cause of uh, all the diseases of Western civilization, including cancer. And I think sugar is one of the primary causes of cancer, but cancer cells feed on sugar. Uh, so, not that I just ate sugar all the time, but ate more sugar, you know, than I should have eaten. Uh, but basically, I had a, I had a healthy diet, and um, and I practiced. Uh, I took nutritional supplements, including a lot of supplements that have um, anti-cancer effects. All right. So what was it? Was it? I um, mean, I, I had a good diet. In other words. I don't think it was a diet that did it. All right, now, I was born in the 50s and I received my polio vaccine and that was a time where actually they, uh, they had uh, added cancer viruses. This has been proven and admitted now. Uh, that was a time where they added cancer viruses to the uh, polio vaccine, knowing that it was gonna cause cancer in these people's lives years later. All right, did I get cancer despite my best efforts? Did I get cancer because I was given uh, cancer viruses in the polio vaccine? I think that's a very, very uh, likely possibility. All right, also we lived, before we moved out here in the country, we lived 25 years in our last residence um, with um, a power line. We lived in the city, but there's a big power line going down the street right, uh, right in front of our house, very close to our house. Our bedroom was in the front of the house. All right, we I spent 25 years. I spent every single night there with a power line, and I'm talking about a high voltage power line. I'm not talking about just a typical neighborhood. I'm talking about the high voltage power lines that move electricity, you know, from one area of the city to other areas of the city. Um, when we first moved there, um, the computer I had at that time was um, the old uh, tube type um, monitors, not the flat screen LED type, but the old tube. The older people will remember these, like your tube television, had a big old huge heavy tube in it. And as a kid, we used to take magnets and put them on those television screens, from these tube type televisions, and we used to move the magnets around. You could distort the picture with the magnets, shows, and that shows you how the magnetic field affects that tube. Well, my uh, computer in this uh, house was right up close to the front of the house, and I noticed that the screen was always wobbling, wobbly like this. The uh, image on the screen was always wobbling a little bit, just kind of distorted like when we put those magnets on it, just always wobbling. And I thought there's something wrong with my computer or my monitor, so I moved it to the back of the house away from the power lines and it stopped. It didn't wobble. And so then I moved it to the forward again and it wobbled and I realized it was those power lines, of uh, the magnetic field of those power lines that was causing that computer screen. All right, um, I slept essentially at the front front of the house where that computer um, monitor was in the same relation to the power lines. Was it 25 years sleeping there with these power lines and that magnetic field affecting that body, that my body? Was that what uh, brought on the cancer? All right, my point is uh, it could have been anything and it could have been everything. Uh, it could have been a combination of electromagnetic forces like that, uh, pollution, um, things accidentally ingested, um, you know the whole the whole run of things. Uh, the viruses, um, the immunization viruses, the genetics. Uh, but despite my best efforts um, in trying to live a healthy lifestyle for my entire life and eating the right foods and practicing colon health, you know, still I came down with cancer. So anybody out there who says, you know, it can't happen to me or who's thinking in the back of their mind, it can't happen to you. Well, guess what? You know, it can, it can happen to you. But anyway, um, so I came down with cancer and as I said, I tried some uh, natural approaches. I tried a lot of different natural approaches and uh, may not have executed them perfectly. I, I may not have uh, taken this seriously enough to, um, to really approach it wholeheartedly. And that's the reason I said in my last video, whatever treatment you, you do, do it wholeheartedly. Don't do it halfway. Do it uh, with, as if your life depended on it, because it does. All right, but, um, I, you know, I felt like I was in the situation of the person that was um, in the automobile accident. My, my leg is broken, bone sticking out through the, the leg, artery severed, 
gushing blood all over the place and someone comes along and says well where do you want me to take you well you know, don't take me to my chiropractor take me to the emergency people the people who are I mean it's, it's beyond what my chiropractor can do for me or my nutritionist or my massage therapist or whatever my acupuncturist my traditional Chinese medicine whatever it's beyond that take it to the experts I mean one thing uh, the medical profession with all of their faults and there are plenty of faults but one thing that they exceed at and they exceed at emergency care that is what they do well and emergency care means that when someone is at the point to where they're about to die they are the ones that you want to see you want to go to the emergency room the people who are equipped uh, with the knowledge and the skills and the expertise and the equipment to take care of that uh, so at this point, like I said, um, with my tumor doubling in size every two months, you know, and uh, the initial tumor that they, they took out of me was some um, lemon size or, or lime, lime or lemon size. Um, so, you know, at that point, my, my colon was blocked. I was in very, very, very bad shape. Um, my wife had to rush me off to the hospital at 3 o'clock in the morning for emergency surgery. At that time, we had no clue I had cancer. I, hadn't, I just figured out by that time that I did have a blockage. And at that time, you know, they, I had surgery that same day, emergency surgery, and they took out the, uh, the tumor. Again, that's the case of the person, uh, you know, in, in the emergency situation. You don't get in that situation and then go see your natural health practitioner and, you know, and say, um, you know, because you're, you know, at that point, literally, after suffering for three weeks, I would have died, most likely, if I hadn't have had immediate intervention. Uh, so that's where I was, and uh, that's how I ended up on uh, chemotherapy. Uh, and despite the fact that, um, you know, I prefer not to do chemotherapy, I prefer to do things the natural way, that's the w route that I've chosen at this time. Uh, may have been other routes that I could have taken and I did explore a lot of routes and I saw some alternative uh, people I saw some alternative MD who uh, treats cancer uh, alternative DC who treats cancer talked to a lot of people had a lot of consultations and this is the way I decided to go at this particular time so I have to deal with that as a natural health practitioner here I am on, uh, on chemotherapy and so that's where capping comes in even though I'm on chemotherapy I love and accept and forgive myself. Even though I'm on chemotherapy for cancer, I love and accept and forgive myself. Even though I am on chemotherapy for cancer, I love and accept and forgive myself. Chemotherapy. 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 This is Survival Doc, reminding you, be prepared or be prepared to be fleeced.